So, let's talk, let's debate human-shaped <laughs> robots versus non-human-shaped robots. Yeah. So, this is the number one comment I, I, I was trying to, like, figure out from people because my my short-sightedness is is always coming to bite me. I, I can't, for one, I can only see smartphones as like the end form factor. Yeah. When they started folding in half, I was like mind blown. Like I, can, I can't see them being injected into our arms or our brains. I just can't, I, I'm so short-sighted. So I, I only see the now. So the other half of that is robots, like I get that we want to make human-shaped robots and they seem really cool, but like they don't seem ready anytime soon. No, not at all. And so when I know that we have really, really good application-specific robots and they're easier to design and create and code than a general-purpose amazing humanoid robot, I think we should do everything that way. That's just my my intuition because of my lack of robotics degree and my short-sightedness. Mm -hmm. But a lot of interesting comments going the other way. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, I actually want to start – there was a pretty solid – video that was tweeted at me of someone breaking down like a couple examples of why we should do humanoid robots. So I'm gonna toss it to Adam, he could play that video. Hi guys, I want to do a very quick video. I've just seen uh, Marcus Brownlee's video where he's you know, basically saying he doesn't agree with the approach of making the, the Tesla bot humanoid. Now, first of all, Marcus is fantastic. One of the greatest tech communicators on the planet. So this isn't an anti-Marcus video, but I do totally disagree with him on this. I'm on Elon's side on this one, surprise, surprise. So Marcus's uh, argument was that you build application-specific robots, okay? Um, and, and that could be true if you're building from the ground up. If you're building a car factory, for example, absolutely, because everything is a flat surface. You, you've got an empty warehouse and you need to fill it with things. But we are talking about um, integrating a robot as possibly a human assistant into a world that has been designed over thousands of years to accommodate the human form. Okay, so the example he gave was he said, the dishwasher is the robot that's been designed. Well, that's only half true because the dishwasher still needs a human to interact with it. Okay, it'd be very difficult. You'd have to design some kind of machine that could take the dishes out the, off the side or whatever and put them in the dishwasher in the right place. So clearly, most practically, the space between your counter and your dishwasher and all these things, it would need to have the dimensions of a human because your kitchen was designed for a human. Um, same with the washing machine. This is first principle stuff. Elon Musk has said, what's the best way to solve the most problems in one go? It's not to build an individual robot for every single tech application you have in your home to replace it. So you, you'd have to replace every single piece of tech or what you do is you work with what we've got and you build a robot in the form that is most compatible with your home. Because if you had wheels on the bottom of it, it could go up and down stairs, for example. Uh, and yes, it does have to fit in a car, which means it has to be able to bend like a human to fit in a car. So the scenario may be that the robot hops into your Tesla one day, the Tesla, a robot itself, drives a robot to supermarket, the robot has to be able to get in and out of the car, otherwise you have to redesign cars. So this is the point, and this is why I disagree, and this is why I think the humanoid approach is correct. Thanks, guys. All right, so. I love that. I love that we're actually getting constructive feedback. This is the best part of like making YouTube videos mm -hmm. is you immediately get like a breadth of different opinions and people who immediately have a thought and can give an opinion like that. Okay, so I wanted to talk about these points, for example, just real quick. Um, the the humanoid f form thing is so interesting because he mentions like a dishwasher, while it is a robot that washes the dishes, it still needs a human yeah. to like load the dishwasher. And I thought, I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But what would be easier designing a robot or designing a dishwasher for that matter with like an arm inside that can reach out and like grab the dishes and put it in or designing an entire humanoid robot that can do a ton of stuff including loading the dishwasher that's my it's, question i think quick if i wanted to use the wash the laundry version sure i think i could find a solution to that a little quicker the dishes one is a is kind of interesting. And I think mm -hmm. what's funny is every time someone brings up the dishwasher scenario is they don't know where the dishes are getting taken from because it's like, well, we have to put them from the sink into the dishwasher. Well, who put them in the sink? Well, then we have to put them from the table to the dishwasher. Well, who set the table? Like, it mm -hmm. just like, it keeps going back and back into these more mundane and mundane tasks that I guess kind of like does make sense for the humanoid robot, but I still not fully sold on it but for laundry let's say yeah. there's people are saying the clothes still need to make it into the laundry machine i think the easiest way for that is like 
your hamper at that point now has some sort of chute that goes straight to the laundry, to the the washing machine, and then that washing machine can transfer to the dryer. Or, I mean, I could totally see, and they might already have this, a two-in-one washer dryer. That's going to come way before a humanoid yeah. robot can like pick my clothes up off the floor. I saw that at CES. And, it was and at crazy. a certain point, like you've that's everything right there. Unless you want the robot to take my clothes off of me and put them <laughs> in the laundry, I, which I will put put my foot down right there. Somebody like, wants I prefer that. that. Somebody wants I mean, that. So I could see maybe there are people who who have trouble that have disabilities where that could be a thing. There's probably an arm connected to your bed or something that could do it better than that. Yeah. Um, dishes, yeah, I agree. There's there's a t- it's a tougher scenario, but I also think in all of these cases, we are being extremely optimistic about being able to have a humanoid robot that's controlling it. I think and so. I, I think one thing to talk about while our world is set up for human sized things i still don't always necessarily know if that means a h- exact human i think something with potentially four legs has a better balance scenario different types of arms yeah. fingers might not always be the best in, uh the best for it i don't think human always makes the most sense for all those and probably a lot of those could be done and be done better with something like spot and an arm or, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, lots lots of thoughts on that. I mean, really the, the question might also be, there's so many versions of this, but oh, like yeah, which everything. side which side do you want to attack the problem at from? Do you want to attack it from the end task side or from like the human side? Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other thing that he mentions is, uh, let's say you want it to go grocery shopping for you. It has to drive your car to the grocery store. So it has to be able to fit in a car. So it has to be human shaped to get in the car. Which is true if you don't have a self-driving car, but if you do have a Tesla, the Tesla drives itself, so you don't need a human-shaped robot. It can fit in the trunk, and then yeah. the car drives itself. So anyway, there's lots of like back-and-forth conversation I, I would like to have, but obviously, it's short. Let's imagine that right there, where we've already proved that there is a way you can do a automated grocery store. You don't even need the robot. If your car can drive itself, if we're at that, if we're assuming it's at that point where it can drive itself already, it can just pull up and pop the trunk and then the automated grocery store is the one loading it into your trunk. Exactly. Or, you know, so ship, now, shipping. Yeah. So now the, the grocery yeah. store is the robot mm-hmm. or the FedEx truck's the robot. Thanks for watching that clip. There's a lot more robot talk where that came from. So make sure you watch the full episode over on the Waveform YouTube channel and also get subscribed if you want to see more clips or broken down stuff like this. There's, there's some good stuff coming. Catch you guys in the next one.